What's going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And I haven't talked to you guys about your favorite team, my favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, in exactly a month. And it is crazy what has all transpired in less than a month um, regarding the Jacksonville Jaguars. And in fact, you know, in the last 24 hours, really, there has just been so much to digest as a Jacksonville Jaguars fan, you know, really in the last two weeks, ever since the Jets beat the Rams, I would say, ever since the Jaguars were for sure going to get that number one overall pick, and the Jaguars were for sure going to get Trevor Lawrence. That's why I'm rocking the Gardner Minshew jersey, ladies and gentlemen, because 2020 was a season. 2020 was a season that I, I went back, right, so this is what I did before I made this video. I went back, and I watched all my videos that I made leading up to this season. And I think a lot of us, you know, we we, we listened to what the media said, and I think there, there was some truth, you know, there was some truth to what they were saying. I mean, there was something in us that thought, you know, maybe we weren't going to be a great football team, but there was no way we were going to be, you know, as bad <laughs> as we actually turned out to be. You know, I even, I said that multiple times, you know, I said a team led by Gardner Minshew isn't going to be this 1-15, in 2-14 team. Hell, I mean, if you say that after the Jaguars beat the Colts in Week 1 and after they put up that competitive game against Tennessee in Week 2, I still think you got some Jaguar fans that would still laugh in your face if you tell them that, hey, by the end of the season, you guys are going to be right in the running for Trevor Lawrence, man, and it's crazy. It is crazy how all that happened, and and here we are. And there's just there's a lot of stuff to be said, and there's a lot of stuff that happened that you know I want to get my opinion out there, and of course I want to hear your guys' opinions in the comment section down below. Always down to have a fair chat, and you know I'm going to be making a lot of videos, um, obviously during the off season because this is going to be I think since. What was that? The 2017 offseason when the Jags got um, Tom Coughlin. This is going to be probably the most active offseason that the Jaguars have ever had. So we are going to be making a lot of videos in the offseason. It's going to be a very, very interactive offseason. And I'm very excited for this ride because, you know, this season was just, it was very, very hard to do, right? It was very hard to cover and it was very hard for me to want to make just Jaguar related videos, right? Because I love making YouTube videos. And I didn't have a lot of problems making the picks videos or my podcast with the guys, right? Because, you know, you see that those are out. But, you know, I enjoyed making those. But, you know, when I have to go on here and talk about, you know, Mabin, I don't even know that man's first name playing corner. We got to talk about why the hell Quentin Meeks is a cornerback and he's wearing number five. You got to talk about the Jaguars' seventh kicker that they've used. Like, dude, my hat's off to, you know, guys like um, UCF Jaguar. I mean, you know, one of my main guys, right? You know, Jaguars United. Guys that are on the Jaguars beat. You guys do a tremendous job covering this team, man, because, oh, man, I could not consistently put out content for that travesty, man. But this travesty really, really Really my turn into gold, though, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, let's hop into the topic at hand, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars 2020 season recap. Okay, so first of all, I want to address that that was probably the longest intro that I have ever done for a video. And it's because, you know, there was a lot of mumbling and ranting at the beginning of that video because, you know, I, I, I don't want this video to be... 30 minutes because I think that there's a lot of things I want to hit on and you know I might not be able to hit on everything because there's just there's a lot of downs and you know there's a lot of ups on the way clearly now I want to say without a doubt I think the whole reason that this season was such a big disappointment is because of this guy right here this guy that I'm wearing this jersey right here because like let's put it this way Let's go back to like a Blaine Gabbert, a 2012-2013 Jaguar squad, right? And and let's say that was the team that was in line to get Trevor Lawrence. That was the exact team. And that was this team that's going to be getting Trevor Lawrence and Blaine Gabbert was a quarterback, right? There was, you know, no excitement. Cecil Shorts is the number one guy. Like, there's no excitement there. 
Gardner Minshew, right? This was a guy that this fan base and really the team believed in. They put a C on his chest for a reason. Like they wanted Gardner Minshew to be the guy. And you know, it just it doesn't it feels like they wanted to tank all along in some ass I don't know. You know, you never want to you never want to say that clearly. Because it's an NFL, it's an NFL organization. It's the National Football League. No NFL team is going to tank on purpose, and you know that because that's you know one of the clearest indications. I think is putting a C on Gardner Minshew's chest, and the you know the constant just you know benching him, putting in Mike Glennon, Jake Luton, the whole QB carousel, all that. You know, like there was belief from a lot of people, and there's still a ton of people out there that still believe like Trevor Lawrence isn't even the right selection at the number one overall pick. There's still some people that think that the Jaguars should take that number one overall selection and either trade back or draft somebody else there. There are people that think that the Jags can still build around Gardner Minshew. If that tells you anything about, you know, how high their expectations were for this season and why it was such a big letdown to a lot of fans that is the biggest reason, and that's why it's, you know, almost somber, like, it's almost like a somber sadness every time, you know, watching the Jags play this year, and it was almost a different feeling from different Jaguar teams, because when you've seen those Blaine Gabbert, Chad Henney teams, you know, you knew that that was going to be garbage, you know, but when you had guys like LaVisca Chenault out there, DJ Chark, I mean, Joe Schobert, who you paid a ton of money to, just underperforming, and, you know, all these guys that you were really hoping were going to, you know, prove these haters wrong, prove the doubters wrong, and do something, you know, and, and they didn't do it. And, you know, they are in a position right now to succeed, and they have a lot, a lot of promise to do that next year. But I'm trying to explain why this year was so disappointing from, you know, an angle of a lot of fans – I think, had a really optimistic view, me included. Because Gardner Minshew, in this jersey, gifted to me by my wonderful girlfriend, Ariana. Shouts out to Ariana. Great, great gal. Everybody shout her out in the comments below. Rambling again. But anyway, she also gave me that camera. By the way, too, shouts out to uh, Cam Robinson, too. I hope the Jaguars resign him. That's another um, key guy I think the Jags should bring back. Uh, Cam Robinson. Um... <laughs> Ariana tried getting me a James Robinson jersey for Christmas, and she ended up giving me a Cam Robinson jersey, and uh, I put it on Twitter, and Cam Robinson actually, uh, quote, retweeted it, so Cam Robinson, a really good guy, but the Jaguars, you know, had a lot of people around them this year that I think a lot of fans invested into and thought that they could at least get them five, six wins, but still, you know, it's a better outcome it's a better outcome. Think about it. Like, think about if that was, if that was what the Jaguars were to get, right? Say, like, these, the Gardner Minshew did play, you know, it, all right. Like, he played all right. Like, he played to the six-win caliber that we wanted him to, right? And LaVisca Chanel, 800, 900 yards. DJ Chark, it's 1,000, let's say. James Robinson, you know, that has another good season. I mean, has a season that we, that he has or whatever, you know, that screws up the draft position. You know, what are we drafting there? You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of things that could have gone wrong there. That, um, you know, if the season didn't end up the way that it did. So, I'm all in all happy with the outcome of the 1-15 season. But all in all, very disappointed from how optimistic I was heading in to the season at hand. Now if we take some time to focus on what the future holds for the Jaguars after the season at hand, there is a lot, a lot to be excited about. I mean, this is probably the most exciting time that there ever has been to be a Jaguars fan. I mean, the national media is talking about us. Everybody's saying this is the most attractive place for any general manager, for any head coach um to ever to want to be i mean it's almost unanimous like where else would you want to be you got the number one overall draft pick you're guaranteed trevor lawrence and you got the most cap space in the nfl and you got a young 
talented roster. You got, you got, there's so much talent to be picked from here. And that's why I think even if the Jags had the number two pick, I still think that the Jaguars still would have been the most attractive spot for a head coach or a general manager. So I still think that uh, this would still be the most attractive spot for any available um, head coach or general manager. Now, the biggest talk of the town is the Jaguars getting a new head coach because as of today, January 4th, 2021, Doug Marone is no longer the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I think unanimously as fans of the Jags, we're all kind of upset for Doug. I mean, Doug Marone is a great guy. And, like, he was... What do you think about it? I mean, he was never supposed to be the head coach. And then he just kind of walked into a situation, led his team to the AFC Championship, and then, you know, got involved in all this drama, the breakdown, the Tom Coughlin stuff, and, you know, one of the greatest self-implosions of any football team ever. So, you know, it's sad to see him go, but it makes sense. And, you know, that means that, you know, Todd Wash is going to be out the building as well. I I still don't think there's been, like, an official announcement that Todd Wash has been fired yet, but I know that Doug Marone is, you know, out the building, and the uh, head coaching interviews have already begun. And obviously the biggest one, the biggest name that Jaguar fans have been talking about um, for the last, I think, even two weeks now, um, Urban Meyer. And this, uh, this just like any other issue for the Jacksonville Jaguars, has completely split the fan base. And, you know, whether that be who to take at the number one spot after Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence went off, or Urban Meyer, it's going to completely split the Jacksonville Jaguar fan base. Doesn't matter what the issue is. And, you know, everybody talks about his health issues and you know, that he's unproven at the NFL level and all this and all that. Now, listen, t listen to me. How long have the Jacksonville Jaguars just been playing it safe? How long have the Jacksonville Jaguars just been playing conservative, you know, running it on first down, running it on second down, running it a slant on third down, putting the ball, taking their points? Like, let's do something bold. Like, let's take a chance on Urban Meyer. Like, what, what, is, what is your big worry? Like, I get his health, his health concerns are a big worry in general. I get that. Like, that sucks, and like, if that, if something bad happens to him health-related, terrible, awful. But as a coach, like, what, what are you worried about? You're worried that we're going to be back, we're going to remain in the basement? Like, we can't go any lower than we already are. Like, we are already bad. So, like, why not get exciting? Like, like, why not get a guy that wants to come here that is a, you know, an icon, like a coaching legend, and wants to, you know, come out of retirement, take the next step, go to the pros, and seize an opportunity here in Jacksonville to make a franchise his own, put his stamp on it, play with Trevor Lawrence, coach Trevor Lawrence, tr coach Trevor Lawrence, and when you get a guy like that, it, it, it has the same drawing power. It has the same effect. And obviously, we're going to hope for different long-term results. We're going to hope for different long-term results. But it has the same effect as when Tom Coughlin came to the Jags in 2017. You're going to see some veterans want to come to Jacksonville because he has that kind of drawing power now. He has that kind of respect. People are going to see that. They're going to say, oh, look. You know, Urban Meyer's there. That's some respect. That's some draw power. They're going to want to come there. Jacksonville's going to become a more and more attractive destination for players to want to come to. Shad Khan sees this opportunity. He sees it. He's a businessman, dude. This is what, this is, this is like what I'm seeing right now. Like, Shad Khan is a businessman, dude. Like, he, he didn't know. Like, but like, I mean, he knows now. Like, this season that the Jaguars just had is probably the best thing to happen to him as an owner. Because now you got all this money. You got the number one overall pick. You got Trevor Lawrence, the next generational quarterback. So much money. 
and you're going to get a new GM. You're going to get a new head coach. And this Urban Meyer wants to come here because he sees just how great this spot can be. People are salivating to come and, you know, take over this team, put their stamp on it for your football team. Shad Khan wants to be a head, like a hands-on owner now because this, he can make a lot of money right now. Tony Khan, his son's going to be making a lot of money in AEW, and now he's going to be making a lot of money with the Jags when Trevor Lawrence starts winning us some playoff games, hopefully, and we get ourselves the right head coach, the right general manager, whoever that's going to be. You know, whether that is Urban Meyer, I say go for it. You know, he the, the rumor is he's going to be one like 12 mil a year. It's a lot of money. <laughs> that's a lot of money, you know. But why not? You know, I say why not? Roll the dice, man. Get bold. Let's let's be bold, man. I say make bold moves. Scared money don't make money is what I say in this situation. And as far as the number one overall pick, I say don't overplay it. You don't, you don't overthink it. Like, Trevor Lawrence. It's Trevor Lawrence. It's got to be 100%. No reason why it should be anybody else. As of right now, on January 4th, 2021... Trevor Lawrence, nobody else, period. Shouldn't shouldn't even be a thought. Get it out of your head. If you're thinking somebody else, take it out of your head. You thinking trading back? No, you shouldn't be. Thinking just you shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. You should not be, you silly, silly goose. But that was my Jaguars 2020 season in review. Um, let me think, who do I want to shout out? Miles Jack had a great year. Miles Jack had a tremendous, tremendous year. Um, he had a great year. Who else? Dude, okay, you know, like, okay. You know, like, there's some randos on the Jaguars this year, right? And I think I've shot on him a couple of times, but, you know, I've came around to him. Andrew Wingard, I like him. Like him. Like him. I'll shout him out. I like him a lot. Shouts out to Andrew Wingard. Um, let's see who else deserves a shout out or dude Taven Bryan's ass cheeks get him out of there um god who am I uh fucking the D tackle dude I oh god I can't think of him right now oh my god he'll come to me but Joe Schobert man you gotta play better next year bro like that's a guy I'm hoping takes another big step next year and performs performs well hopefully cj henderson stays healthy because that'll be a big thing i think safety safety is the number one biggest priority um on the defensive side of the ball next year both of them both safety positions and i think you need you know probably another corner you need to address that uh defensive end defensive tackle defensive line everywhere on the defense the Jaguars need to spend a lot of money on their defense next year. Um, I think my next video is going to be just, you know, previewing some free agents. You know, if you want some other video ideas, leave them in the comment section down below. It was great to chat at you guys again. Make sure if you guys haven't already, you can check on the links down below. Make sure you can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.